San Diego Comic-Con 2020 is right around the corner, and even though the physical con will be canceled this year due to the whole pandemic situation, Funko will still be releasing a bunch of exclusive products, whether that'll be online or in person, who the hell knows what'll be happening by then. For those of you who have been subbed here to the channel for a while, you might remember my San Diego Comic-Con reaction video from last year, but if you missed out on it, here's a general overview of what I thought. Who the f*** is Ratfink? Now, I think it's very important to remember that I am a huge Funko fan. I've been collecting for over four years now, and even during the con last year that I think had a lot of lame variants, I still picked up a bunch of these pops, and that includes some of them that I'm going to go on to call lame later on in this video. San Diego Comic-Con 2019 was probably one of the lamest in history, and now this is, of course, my opinion, but I feel like the amount of underwhelming variants and color swaps was just so disappointing. And this isn't to call the entire Comic-Con a bust, because I can totally appreciate pops like Ghost Gotenks, King and Kodos, and this awesome Jaws moment that are just so clever and creative, and Funko finally gave fans things like they were looking for, like introducing them to the Neon Genesis Evangelon license, which they haven't had before. However, my argument isn't that Funko needs to stop doing variants, because I'm guilty of having a bunch of them, and it is a staple of being a Funko collector. And I guarantee that everybody watching at home has some sort of variant of some pop in their collection. Variants are very commonplace, and I'm okay with retailer exclusive glows or t-shirt bundles to target, like, I totally get it. My argument is that if this is the biggest Comic-Con of the year, if San Diego Comic-Con is the pinnacle of Comic-Con experience, Shouldn't Funko be bringing out some more exclusivity and some more unique molds rather than just another Pickle Rick? So my biggest issue with San Diego Comic-Con 2019 and the honest reason that this video came into my mind at all, it, it all boils down to this one pop in particular that for some reason just really pisses me off. This damn gold chrome Demogorgon from Stranger Things. When this was revealed last summer, I took it at face value. It was right before the new season of Stranger Things came out, so I totally understood that they couldn't release anything without spoiling that new season. And they definitely ran out of options from the first two seasons, except for Murray for some reason. My issue with this gold chrome Demogorgon is that it was most likely meant to mirror the 2018 gold chrome hopper, which was 44 pieces and only available at fun days. And I think that would have been a great motif to have brought back for a second Comic-Con in a row. But if they wanted to do another gold chrome pop, why on earth did they share it with Barnes and Noble? I'm not suggesting that we needed to have another 44 piece counted pop rolling around out there, but maybe a 2000 piece on the Funko shop for those hardcore Stranger Things collectors, or maybe it was a convention booth only for 1000 pieces to reward those who won the lottery. Uh, it just seems so strange to me that they went ahead and they took this very exclusive gold chrome hopper, made another character in that same gold chrome, and then shared it with a popular retailer. Another example of this is the red chrome Vegeta. And disclaimer alert, I'm not a fan of Dragon Ball Z at all, and my knowledge of the franchise stems from Funko Reveals. And not being a Dragon Ball Z collector, I still understand that collecting Funko Dragon Ball Z feels like this. San Diego Comic-Con 2018 brought us the Gold Chrome Vegeta, which was shared with the infamous Toy Tokyo, and it was a real shit show. Both collectors and flippers went crazy for it, and at the time, it was sold for a fuck ton of money. As time went on, New York Comic-Con 2018 brought us a Blue Chrome Vegeta that was also shared with Toy Tokyo, and it was sold for a good chunk of change as well. Definitely not as much as that initial Gold Chrome, but it still sold for roughly around 40 to 50 bucks a few weeks after the dust settled from it. Then in 2019, Funko announced the Red Chrome Vegeta for San Diego Comic-Con, and for the first time, it was going to be shared with a physical retailer, Hot Topic. Going to Hot Topic the morning of the release, the shelves were stacked with these guys. I mean, to a point where it might have even been a little obnoxious. Then, nearly a month later, I was still able to go out to my local Hot Topics, and these things were still sitting on shelves while I was out doing hunting videos. It was just so surreal to me to see this Chrome Vegeta gimmick go from being something that was so sought after to being a shelf warmer at my Hot Topic. Where's the hunt? Why would a collector go out to get this variant of a beloved character if it's still there a month later? As time has gone on, the value of all of these aforementioned chromes has completely dropped down, but the red chrome has never hit anywhere near the value of those Toy Tokyo ones. And why is that? Why did the gold chrome Demogorgon and red chrome Vegeta feel like such underwhelming Comic-Con pops? In my personal opinion, 
I feel like it was because Funko just simply is not limiting enough of their Comic-Con catalog anymore, and it really shows. The amount of exclusive products is seemingly going down every year, and I don't mean things like, Oh, Babe Ruth never went live in the Funko shop, and now it's worth $200, boo! I mean, like, limited edition, piece count on the sticker Funko products. I'm talking about Funko products with a hard piece count, things that are intended to be rare, and you can only get either at the Funko shop, and they sell out in three seconds, or I'm talking about only available at the booth, need to be at the con in person. Looking at all of the Comic Cons that I've been around for, meaning my personal time in the community, I felt like there was definitely a drastic drop off in exclusivity around 2018 or maybe 2019. And after I looked at it, it was much worse than I thought. From 2016 to 2018, Funko was hovering around the high 20s to mid 30s of their Comic Con catalog being exclusive piece counted meaning that 20 to 30% of their catalog had a piece count announced with their items. Then we saw a slight dip down to 21% for San Diego Comic-Con 2018. And then from there on out, we hit 15% down all the way to a 5% of the catalog being piece counted, meaning that 95% of their Comic-Con catalog was shared with outside retailers. It is just so mind boggling to me that all of these limited edition piece counted pops are just being depleted so low while all of these cheap cop out exclusives are being mass produced and are still sitting on store shelves. Like I don't understand if I could go out to Barnes and Noble and post pictures of the gold chrome Demogorgon still sitting on the shelves, I would cause it's sad, but it's true. These exclusives are just hanging around much longer than they need to be because they are being produced too much. Fortnite is extremely popular. I get it. I still play it, but why not make this glow loot llama 1000 pieces and exclusive to the Funko shop, or maybe have it be only available on GameStop's website or something. So hardcore Fortnite collectors have something to work at, or maybe you could take these green chrome star Wars pops and slap a 2000 piece sticker on them and have them be convention only. This way, those who are into star Wars have the chance to grab them for their chrome set and those who don't care for them don't have to deal with them lining the shelves of their local FYEs for the next two years, because that's what I've got going on at my local stores. Or maybe take this 25,000 piece glow in the dark pickle Rick pop and just literally don't do it. And exclusivity matters. Don't let somebody tell you that it doesn't because it does matter. If everything was easy to get, then there would be absolutely no hunt involved. The best example of this that I can give is the parks and recreation line which is a line that I hold near and dear to my heart as it's my favorite TV show of all time. I actually made an entire video here on the channel about a year ago where I complained about how I would never get my hands on this Johnny Karate or Mouse Rat Andy, psych bitches. But at the end of that rant, I made sure to land on a level head because limited pieces need to be there. It's frustrating, it's as annoying as it is, it, it just has to be there. As frustrating as it is for me to have the entire Parks and Recreation set except for this 47 piece Andy, I get it, I really do. There's something so frustrating about there being a limited edition piece or a pop that you want, whether it's Scott Pilgrim or Star Wars or something that is just so hard to get your hands on and it's so frustrating but that needs to be there. There needs to be things that are difficult to get and there needs to be things that maybe not everybody will be able to get their hands on. And I think that Fun Days definitely helps fill this hole in the community once a year for San Diego Comic-Con because there are some absolute grails sold to those who get to attend. But those are honestly mostly just Freddy Funkos, which might not appeal to the general collector, such as a gold chrome hopper or a Johnny Karate, or even some of those director's pops such as Taika Waititi that have launched at different Comic-Cons. There needs to be items in any collectible community that are hard to get, because if everything is mass produced and retain no value at launch, then where's the collectability? If you create all of these variants of pre-existing molds and characters, then make them available to major retailers that everybody has access to, like GameStop or Hot Topic, where is the rarity? 
Things like this make me think about even picking Comic-Con Pops up at launch. Should I not get this red chrome Vegeta even though I really want it because I'll be able to use hot cash on it in two weeks? Should I not get Missing Day from Game of Thrones because Barnes & Noble will slap that big ass fucking 50% sticker on the front of it in three weeks? The reason that the gold chrome and blue chrome Vegeta both came out of the gate at such high value is because Toy Tokyo sucks ass, plain and simple. Their website is infamous for crashing. They usually only sell their exclusives in bundles where you have literally no choice but to spend $100 on four pops you don't even want just to get that one yellow Mega Man variant, which is what I did by the way. I did that and then I ended up selling my entire Mega Man collection. What's up, Money's Funko Pops here. Something else that I think is important to talk about when it comes to variants and its correlation to exclusivity are some of these older Comic Cons. And I'm talking about San Diego Comic-Con 2012 up through SDCC 2015, which admittedly enough, I was not a part of the community at that time. Uh, I, for example, was too busy going out and collecting Amiibo at 6 a.m. waiting outside of my Toys R Us, and now they are all sitting in a box in my fucking closet. For San Diego Comic-Con 2012, Funko's entire catalog started not only as con booth only, but it was completely piece counted, meaning that each item had a hard piece count on that sticker that you could see that you owned one of 480 or one of 1,000. It wasn't until 2015 that we started to see some shared retailers. There are, of course, other factors that go into most, if not all, of these older San Diego Comic-Con pops being worth hundreds and now even thousands of dollars such as there being less people in the community at the time, or that simply because time has gone on, the values of these pops have gone up immensely. I mean, some of these pops are worth so much money. The best example that I can give to compare current day Funko with past time Comic-Con variants is Big Bang Theory. And they had the honor of being remade because some of these older ones look terrible, and these new ones have some amazing updated molds with so much detail. Funko also took almost the complete cast and made variants of them for San Diego Comic-Con 2019, which is something that they did back in 2013 with these semi-transparent exclusives. Each of these were limited to 1,000 pieces, and now they average for 100 each, some of them being a little bit more than that $100 mark. Meanwhile, you can now get these San Diego Comic-Con Halloween Big Bang Theory Pops that were shared with Walmart for the price of just one of them, meaning that you can get that entire set for the price of one of those older ones. Why not mirror what Funko did six years ago with some exclusivity? Or maybe make them into some awesome five pack that would look incredible sitting on a collector's shelves. But when you take a variant and stock Barnes & Noble, Hot Topic, or Walmart's shelves with dozens upon dozens of these things, they're just going to sit because a lot of collectors will understand that they can get them for cheaper if they wait for clearance, or maybe even go to the secondary market and get them when flippers can't resell them. I want to say again that I'm not sitting here saying that I think Funko sharing its entire catalog with retailers is a bad thing. I just think that it's great that so many collectors are able to grab things that we want the morning of. And truthfully, it really brings together this community dynamic that some communities might not be able to share together. It, it truthfully is a great thing. And I would even argue that if Funko went back to giving 50% or more of its catalog as a piece count, it would be too much. There's this golden area that Funko needs to be operating in. And while I'm not sure exactly what what that golden area looks like, it's definitely more than this abysmal 5% of piece counted pops for San Diego Comic Con last year. I mean, that's just, it's too little. And while a lot of these older Comic-Con catalogs have so many exclusives that are nearly all piece counted and impossible for collectors to get, that's kind of the name of the game, right? And you're probably sitting there thinking to yourself, money, why the hell does this matter? And honestly, it matters to the greater community. I mean, granted right now, products are still being delayed because of the whole pandemic, but there are still plenty of products being not only released, but announced by Funko. And after seeing some of these Emerald City Comic-Con exclusives, I don't necessarily think that this trend is going to be going away. And I would even bet that this trend of less and less piece counted limited edition pops will continue to decrease as time goes on. And granted, Funko Soda is going to be bumping these numbers up a bit. Even for Emerald City Comic Con 2020 this past spring, there were a bunch of sodas that lended that number to be higher simply because the Funko Soda is always going to be numbered. That's just how it is produced. But in terms of non-soda things, we're going to continue to see shelves be flooded by exclusives, and I think that unfortunately a majority of them are going to be variants as time goes on. And what do I expect from San Diego Comic-Con 2020 itself after stating throughout this entire video that my biggest issue is San Diego Comic-Con 2019? 
honestly, I do expect some pretty cool stuff. I expect some things that I will absolutely need to get my hands on. I would really love a Winged Dragon of Raw from Yu-Gi-Oh, considering that we're going to be getting Obelisk and Slifer, and I'm extremely excited for the potential that Funko could put into some of these pops. I'm just really excited about it. I feel like con season is probably one of the best times of the year for any Funko collector and I love the community aspect that it brings people together and it's just really a fun time. But on top of those things that I'm excited for, I also expect a bunch of variants like some ad icons or another Rick and Morty, another Dwight from The Office, some more flocked Pokemon, probably Growlithe and Vulpix, and I expect another Vegeta or Goku Chrome and at some point they'll probably be eating noodles because apparently that's a thing now. But like I said, I expect some incredible designs that are going to blow me away, and although I might not pick them up, it will bring back hope that Funko hasn't lost their way as they muck around inside of all of these variants and cop out glow and flock pops that are going to sit on store shelves for months and sometimes even years after they've been produced. While Funko has been seemingly decreasing their exclusivity on items, I know that they will never do away with count pieces altogether. The Funko Shop is a great example of this, as I've said that Funko Soda is another great example, and even though their Comic-Con exclusivity may be dropping, I still expect a few hard-to-reach pieces that I will most likely need to get my hands on, mostly because I'm a Scott Pilgrim collector, and this set is the fucking bane of my existence, I swear. And just remember, for every Kato variant from the Green Hornet, there's a Ghost Gotenks. For every Batman Chrome, there's a King and Kodos. And for every Pickle Rick, there's probably another fucking Pickle Rick. Thank you guys so much for taking time to watch my little San Diego Comic-Con rant video. Uh, I don't know, I've, I've been thinking about doing a video essay like this for some time, and after kind of sorting through some ideas and some content, this is kind of what I landed on. So, I hope you guys enjoyed it. You know, I kind of feel like there aren't a lot of humans on YouTube, and I'm not just talking about the Funko community, I'm talking about YouTube in general, and I want to try and make some videos that, like, I can do something like this, and and sit down and kind of just rant and share my honest opinion on something while kind of truly being myself and, you know, rather than trying to be some sort of caricature or like a talk show host or I, I don't know, I'm, I'm just kind of word vomiting again at this point, but but if you guys want to see more videos like this where I sit down and, and talk about an aspect of the Funko community, please feel free to give this video a like. I would love to judge the, uh, the you know, the interactions and if you guys enjoyed this. So, and make sure to leave a comment down below letting me know uh, what you are looking forward to for San Diego Comic-Con? Is there a pop that you are anticipating or is there one that you really want to see Funko make? Make sure you leave me a comment down below and we can have a whole discussion about it. Um, again, guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and uh, hopefully be seeing you soon.